Morning everybody, today we're going to talk about how to hit better drives. Some basics and a little bit more than basic ideas. So a bit for everyone from beginners to accomplished golfers hopefully can learn something from this. But how to get the most out of your big stick, a club that so many golfers do struggle with. Hopefully today's video will allow you to really rethink if you are struggling with this club, how to approach it. Maybe a level of consistency that allows you to enjoy this game a little bit more. If this video does help you, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of them. If you find out this video helps you as well, make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know that it helped you. If it didn't, let me know what you'd want to see more of, like how has it not helped you? And as always, hit that like button. Helps the channel out, YouTube likes it, and we gotta play the little algorithm game, I'm afraid. It's good content, it's free. Might as well all get stuck in and like it, didn't we? Let's just kick it off from the ground upwards. First thing, we've got the ball on a tee. So let's use this advantage. General rule of thumb is you want half of the ball above the crown of the club, which for me, with my driver depth, is a pink tee. This is kind of going to catch most golfers. You can go higher and lower in this subject to how you deliver. Um, it can create different shots. I've done a full video on tee height that maybe I'll link. Um, but you want to tee that ball up and we want to try and get it about half of the ball above the crown of the club is a good starting point to work from. Now if we want to control the delivery of this club what we're going to look for in your setup is some pretty neutral ideas. We don't want any big twists, turns, extreme ball positions. Otherwise, we're gonna find it hard to deliver that club every time. Now, we might see some extreme grips and swings and setups, say on tour, people often go back to, oh, I, but I see these players doing this on tour. For the majority of golfers, like casting the biggest net, say for this video, that I've teached over the years, when you start seeing extremes, you start seeing extreme shots. Trying to neutralize everything from grip setup often for golfers just brings them into a much tighter dispersion pattern. You see these extremes on tour because you're talking about some of the most skilled golfers on the planet. Unfortunately, we're not as skilled as them. We need as much help as we can get as a general rule. So if we kick off with the hold, if I go lead hand, so my top hand, I'm gonna see two to three knuckles on this um, lead hand. So when I stare down, I've got the thumb just right of center. So you can see it gives this little curve in my hand. I haven't got my thumb really extended down. It's kind of doubling back up a little bit as well. Now you can be anywhere between three down into two knuckles, I think for pretty functional golf. Another massive key, is making sure we're getting it through this part of the palm. So many people put the driver up through here, it leads to really bad face control, often slicing. So through the top of the first finger, bottom of the pad of the uh, lead hand, and then wrapping round, you're gonna find for lots of people that's much lower in their grip than they're used to. Now underneath, I don't mind if you interlock your grip, if you overlap, or if you ten finger your grip, but I do worry about the position of your trail hand for me, my right hand. When I start seeing excessive over the top grips, I see lots of slicers. This is known as a weak grip. When we see hand getting underneath, this is known as a strong grip. We see slicers and people hooking the ball from here. So we want a nice neutral grip, which is basically linking onto the thumb of the lead hand, this fleshy meaty pad basically sits on top of that thumb and I create a triangle with my first finger and thumb and in setup this triangle is going somewhere up towards my right shoulder so between chin and right shoulders a nice port of call. Lots of people talk about grip pressure as well. Um, try not to get too hit up on grip pressure, relatively relaxed but you've got to have enough pressure to be able to swing this club fast. We're going to be trying to move the driver with speed so you do need to be holding on to it. I do see lots of tension up through the arms. I see people get shoulders and arms really tense and if you can be more relaxed in your body and have hold of this club there's better chance we're going to have control of this face. Ball position next, let's position this ball forward in your stance. I like to see it somewhere between, say, the middle of my lead foot to one or two inches inside the heel. I call it a playing field. You can move it anywhere in between those points. I play mine basically just on my lead heel. What this does is it allows me to find my zero point with my swing. So A, I get my upward hit, which is what I want with this club, and the club path isn't too far left or right. Because you can imagine, as I move ball position, if I move it back towards trail foot here, my path's still moving far too far to the right at this point and down. I've not got the club out in front of me and up to hit the ball and this tends to squirt the ball a bit off to the right. So playing with your ball position can give you some really good control of the face. Play with the playing field between big toe, so kind of mid 
the, the base of your big toe. So they're like the, the knuckle as it joins the foot to two inches inside that lead heel. And see if it changes your club path and then in turn the direction of the ball. What about how should you stand your posture, your width of stance? Nice wide stance. So I'm really trying to get my shoulder whip stance and even so the outsides of my two feet are outside of my shoulders, inside of my feet getting to the shoulders width. This is gonna give me some stability to make the big turns that I hit. Remember with this club, we are trying to create speed. We're driving the ball, we're sending it as far as possible. I see lots of narrow stances, something I certainly struggle with. This encourages kind of big swaying movements, often less speed, those kind of ideas. Nice wide stance, get it a good shoulder width apart. Remember, if you become, if you're a golfer who needs to widen it, so for me I need to widen it, as you widen your stance your ball position in effect will change even if this lead foot doesn't. So as the wider I go look how much further back that puts me. So in turn even though the ball position is fixed on that foot my body is like way behind the ball and I'm going to hit it on a different part of my arc. So just by widening your stance, if you're someone who has to, which is one of the most common feats I would say with amateur golfers, just be sure that the ball position in relationship to your body doesn't disappear too much. So even though the ball is on the inside of my lead heel, I would say the ball's actually up towards my penguin logo here on my jumper. Now my penguin logo is back here. Yeah, so just watch as you move your width of stance that the ball position isn't being affected as well. When it comes to posture, nice little bend forward from the waist, little bit of knee flex, nice and relaxed in your spine. Don't get too bolt straight. That's a common mistake I see. People get really stiff with this one. And certainly don't get pelvis too level, which means you have to start rounding off. So we want to make sure the pelvis is pointing down towards the ball a little bit more. Nice and relaxed with your back, but comfortably straight when you've got that nice wide stance. So you are gonna find that your shoulders are just sneaking ahead onto the toes of your feet and just sneaking ahead slightly. And then the last thing for your driver, it's a club where we do, of all your golf clubs, we need repeatability. That's gonna be the big skill that allows you to enjoy this game. Now, I want you to think about a pre-shot routine. So something you do before each shot that allows you to get into the same position. So I'll just talk you through mine. So I'm gonna, aim myself to start so i'm going to aim myself with the face first and then my feet are going to be relative to where i want that face to point so for instance let's say i'm pointing the face up the left and i want to cut the ball so i'm going to point my feet now feet a little bit further left of that face because it's going to encourage me to get a face to path relationship to fade the ball so i'm using my face to aim and then aiming my body to that subject to the shot I want to hit. I'm going to go for quite a straight one. So I'm going to point the face where I want the ball to finish because I'm trying to go with no curvature. I'm going to stand with my wide stance, got my ball position set and my grip is seamless with the face and the stance. For you, if it's something where you're struggling with your grip, you might find it easier to put your grip on first, then put your face in, then take up your stance. So if you're working on your posture, you might find that it's face, grip, stance, and then you're fiddling around with posture. Whatever it is, just get a system that repeats. You want to be getting in the same position each time. You'd be amazed at the amount of amateurs I come out and do on course lessons with. And you know, one shot they're aiming 50 yards left, next shot they're aiming 20 yards right, next shot they've got their hands low or they've twisted their grip because they're fighting a grip change. It's that repeatability that's going to allow you to get hopefully some repeatability in the shots. Then you'll know where to aim them. You'll know where to try and set the ball off the curve it back to the target or vice versa. If you're in it straight, know where to aim because you're going to hit it straight. Knowing that's going to come out, knowing you're going to give yourself the best chance each time. Pre-shot routines can really help you do that. So basic setup in place, pre-shot routine coming in to try and help me find some repeatability. Face and grip almost seamless, nice wide stance. That's something I have to work on, I get narrow. Couple of looks for aim. I'm just shuffling to get comfortable. See, I'm waggling the club. I'm just thinking about where I'm gonna take this club. So am I gonna go this way, this way? I'm gonna try and hit this quite straight. So I'm just kind of rehearsing that in my mind and then I'm ready to pull the trigger. Take it. Now we've got the basic setup sorted out. Let's start talking about what to do with that golf swing.
We are now set up. We've got to swing this club. So what are we going to try and do to swing the club? And what are the big killers that I see when people are trying to swing the big dog, the driver? We've set ourselves up in a way that will allow us hopefully to deliver a face and a path that are in line with each other to hit as little curvature as possible. We've also set ourselves up in a way that's going to allow us hopefully to create some speed. We want this club moving at a certain speed. It's going to be hopefully moving faster than any of the other clubs in your bag. It is the longest for most people, unless you've got some funky makeup in your bag. Let's use that setup and capitalize on it and make some movements that allow us to deliver the club and hopefully get that speed to get you moving that ball down that very as far as you can and in play. So let's think about width to start us. One of the big killers I see in golf for amateurs is width, lack of of so what i mean by width is actually getting this club to get away from you on the backswing actually trying to get it up in the air get it over right shoulder great rule of thumb try and get your hands from down in front of you here up over your right shoulder as your body and your hips turn i see lots of golfers get a little bit stuck down here or they start going this way and it starts falling very much down onto their right shoulder as they pick it up so trying to get your hips to rotate so we want your hips turning there'll also be some tilt in there so left pocket goes down right pocket goes up as they go back want your shoulders turning left shoulder going down i always see my left shoulder in the corner of my eye going down and almost getting under the ball as i go back and trying to get my back feeling like it's turning to the target but as i do these turns i'm also trying to create width big killer that I see for amateur golfers is lack of. So what they do is they want to either just put the club on the right shoulder. Now we've got the club kind of tumbling, falling out the sky, down at the ball, creating these horrible like necky cuts that go along the left or massive cuts off to the right because they're now not controlling the path as well as struggling to control the face with those kind of movements. Getting your arms, hands over right shoulder with some stretch is a great way of getting this club moving and turning and hopefully in a direction somewhere out in front of you. And that's something that I'm always feeling with this club. I'm feeling like I'm turning it back in a direction that's gonna allow me to throw it out to that target. So as in, if I just pick this club up, stand it up out this side, I feel like I'm gonna swing down and to the left. Ball might go straight left or like I say, curve. If I was to then whip it back inside, right behind me really early, I feel like I'm going to swing out to the right. And if I don't, then I'm going to have to start redirecting. So trying to get the feeling of that club just throwing out to that target with the way you set it behind you is a great way of trying to control the path of this club. The direction it's moving as it comes down to hit the ball. Now at the same time, if we can try and keep the wrists to a minimum, so feel like you're not really hinging the wrists up, and definitely feel like you're not putting too much extension in this lead wrist. So let's, what does that mean, extension in the lead wrist? A, a phrase you're going to hear so much in golf coaching. So for me, my left hand, my lead hand, my lead wrist starts extended. So there's a cup, there's an angle as I start that swing because of the way I hold it. Then as I go back, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a little bit of that extension out. It's going to move this way. And what that does is it gets the face moving this way. It takes loft off. It stops that tendency that lots of golfers have to slice the ball. If anything, it's tending and giving me a tendency to curve it more to the left. So as I turn my hips and tilt my hips, as I turn my shoulders and tilt my shoulders, what I'm going to do is get my hands over my right shoulder of extension but I'm gonna try and flatten lead wrist. I'm gonna try and make sure I certainly don't add any extension, which is gonna make that club face get in a little bit of a mess. The other thing that happens as well, if I take the extension out of the lead wrist, what happens is I get much better at creating width. Golfers who tend to extend that wrist a lot allows them to actually, what looks like put more wrist hinge, they're not, they're just using extension to get it there, but they start getting the club kind of really close to shoulder because this movement with the wrist allows for what feels like a bigger angle creation here. The more I flatten that wrist, it tends to see how it's pushing that club back. Extend it, it's bringing it up towards me. If I flatten it out, it starts to want to push it back. If I actually start to bow it this way, it starts to push it way away from me. And that's extension. That's that width that we want. Because the other killer move that I see with the amateur golfers with the driver is they want to take any width out that they create on the way back by adding again extension in that lead wrist pulling things in close feeling like what they get lots of lag is called and has been coached in coaching for years which literally just gets me really struggling now to control the face of the path 
Generally, the face is way open to a path. We see big blocks, massive cuts, lots of mess. So on the backswing and the downswing, we're trying to take that extension out. Great drill for that. Club's quite long, obviously a driver feels long. I'm gonna have my good width for stance, but I'm gonna swing just with my lead hand and at the top of the club. And I'm gonna use my body turn to try and get my lead hand and arm up over right shoulder. But at the same time, I'm not gonna extend that wrist, which lets that club feel like it's just gonna flop. Feel like you're pushing that club away and up. And then on the downswing, same thing. Feel like you're pushing it away and now down into this right corner. Because what this will also do is help us with our angle of attack. This is a big one. So if your club is hitting the ball level on the way down, is it hitting on the way up as it connects that ball? Or is it hitting on the downswing? So coming down, so many amateur golfers struggle with the club coming down, face opens the pass, adding loft, and what happens is they big, big high cuts off to the right, losing loads of distance potential. By getting this width in my backswing, it's allowing me to hopefully bottom the club out before the ball and get that ball on the way up which might just help you gain a fraction more distance, a few more yards with your tee shots. Get those hips turning, get those shoulders turning, get those wrists flattening on the way back, lead wrist flattening with arm, and feel like you're pushing the club away, back swing and down swing, big killer. This really close move. I mean, it's going to go low and curve. Horrible. Next big killer that we see as well, we want you to try and turn behind the ball. So you've got these slight tilts that we showed you in that setup at the beginning. So we've got your nice wide stance, hips just slightly forward and upper body is tilted back. This is tilted back for a reason because we want the backswing to be turning this way. Big killer I see with amateur golfers is going this way. So what happens is the hips, what I call slide out from underneath them. So if you imagine I'm in like one of those magician's boxes where they cut you in half and you know, they move the two boxes away which isn't real, obviously. Um, but they're just sliding that bottom half away from you and then the upper half stays with the ball. This is such an encouraging slicing action. So as I come down and hit the ball, I'm either going this way or I'm having to try and re-jiggle, which is getting handled high and again, face the path, just not controlled. So trying to get the order of the backswing between the hip and the shoulder turn with some tilts is only going to help you, again, get that width, get that club delivering, hopefully a bit more up at the ball, certainly level, and it'll help you control the face as well. So a few ideas to help you order this backswing. As you get your width with your backswing in your hands, feel like your hips are turning and staying with the ball a bit more. So feel like you're going to put your hands over into this section on your backswing, but keep the hips turning with the ball. This is an extreme action, but it's a great way of getting people to order the backswing away from this way. I feel like there's almost a brick wall here and all you're gonna do is turn kind of back along it. You might bump into it a little bit at the start and then you're gonna turn away from it. So really, again, get your hands this side of you on the backswing, keep that, those hips turning with that golf ball. Don't worry if your lead foot has to come up to do this. And at the same time, if you can get that lead hand, gloved hand, wrist flattening, it's gonna really help the order of that downswing. That is a killer move. This one just destroys golfers. Second little drill you can do to try and order that backswing with the driver. Place the club here on my right hip, look. So I'm just gonna feel my hips moving along the graphite shaft here. It's, uh, very smooth the graphite with my trousers so I can feel my hips just moving this way so I'm not going to try and move this club away but at the same time I'm going to try and get my hand so I'm going to swing only with my lead hand here that side of the shaft so hips are going to slide along it hands going to go over this side again what you're going to feel is the order don't worry if you come away from the shaft a little bit that's not a bad thing again that's getting the order of the movements this way more and getting away from kind of these angles where the Club's moved out and your hand's nowhere near over that shaft. Great thing you can do this at home, you can do this in the office. You can even do it on the tee before you hit your shot as a rehearsal, work it into your pre-shot. So we've got our pre-shot routine, linking with our setup. We've got our ideas of how to control the face, the path and delivery in the backswing. Let's try and make sure we do put some speed in. And give it a good old whack. Finally, Let's talk about some strategy. How could you get out there and maybe keep the ball in play a little bit more? What could you do now? You've got all your techniques, your grips, your pre-shot, everything in place. What can we do to help you keep that ball a little bit more in play with some smart thinking on the course? 
So I've got a few balls here, I've already sent one off. What I'm gonna do is hit them away and we're gonna to talk to you about shot patterns. So where each shot goes and where it finishes in relationship to this very tight hole. First thing with my strategy is I'm aiming at the middle of this fairway. And I mean, I want my ball to finish in the middle of the fairway. Now that sounds really obvious, doesn't it? Who wouldn't want to be in the middle of the fairway? But some golfers are trying to hit the right side or the left side of the fairway. If you do that, you are reducing your chances of hitting that fairway. So what I mean is I've got a shot pattern, which you'll see just from this little array of shots. And if I hit more, you'd see even more, which has got variants from left to right. You know, it's going to be 25 to 50 yards left and right for me. And I'm a relatively skilled driver. Yours might be 70, 80, 90 yards wide, even more. To think that you can hit the left side of the fairway up there that's 30 yards wide, so you can move it into a 15 yard gap on purpose, not even the world's best, even though they think they can as well, can do that if you look at their shot patterns. So by aiming at the left side or the right side, by definition, you're actually reducing your chances of hitting it. So I'm actually gonna aim to hit the middle of the fairway. Now there are some caveats to this. Let's say I mean, this hole has out of bounds up the right. So there might be occasions where I do try to hit the trees on the left. So what that means, if I aim at the trees at the left, it's gonna move more to the middle of the fairway, to the right side of the fairway, but it won't reach the out of bounds. I'm gonna move my shot pattern away from trouble, but no trouble there. And I'm trying to hit the fairway and keep that ball in play as much as possible, aiming at the middle. Trying to think that we're skilled enough to hit the left or right is only a recipe for hitting more shots into trouble. And let's hit a few and show you. I mean, I've got wind off the left and strong here today. This is a tough drive. So I'm aiming at the left side for the wind, aiming to try and hit the middle of that fairway. So again, pre-shot routine, trying to keep everything the same. Right, let's show you where all those have finished. And they're a pretty decent array of drives, to be fair. So this is really interesting, and hopefully you can work out your shot patterns for some better drives. There's one drive here in the fairway, two further up here in the fairway, same line three, and then we've got left rough and left rough. So we're basically short to long. Remember, this was a good batch of tee shots. We're talking 20 yards left to right, and this was a good batch of tee shots, is 25 paces, 25 paces. This fairway is, at this point where I'm hitting, 28 paces wide. I ain't gonna be able to get out on the left or right side with any consistency. Now, I, I'm a pretty good, accurate driver. It's one of my skills. Someone who has a wider dispersion pattern, if you don't know what that is, when you have holes like this with out of bounds just here, knowing where to aim, trusting where to aim, is gonna be really hard for you. If you're gonna try and aim down the left side and you've got a 60 yard dispersion pattern with some of them going right, out of bounds on the right, you're gonna hit some over there. You need to be aiming 30 yards left, 35 yards left and just take the left rough. Uh, you know, it, it, it's in play. You might be able to move the ones. I mean, if we look at the two in the left rough here, this one's 100 yards out and I can get this green side, if not near the flag, to be fair. This one's in more trouble, but I can chip it forwards 80 yards and have a 20 yard shot on. I can't do that from out of bounds. I'm free off the tee and hopefully getting back to this spot or a little bit better. Learning shot patterns. The other thing, and that leads me on to, once you've learned your shot patterns, you might find that they vary a little bit on the day on the course. So what I really want to see you do, and I don't see enough amateurs do, is don't fight them. The quicker you can learn your shot patterns from day to day, because they will change. This is where warming up on a range can really help. You know, if you get on that range and you're hitting bigger cuts than you normally do, if you've got a swing foot to sort it out, do it. If you don't, just play them. The amount of times I've gone on a course with an intention and run away from that intention within three holes because it's not coming off, because I want to get round. Like, it's countless times to put together a score. Amateurs, I just constantly see them aiming down the middle, cutting it off to the right, aiming down the middle, cutting it off to the right, aiming down the middle, cutting it off to the right. Like at what point will you stop banging your head against that brick wall, I always think. You know, I say to them, if we're not in competitions, and certainly if I'm teaching them, I let them make the mistake enough times for them to realize that they make the mistake enough times. And then I'll say, look, next one, let's aim 20 yards left. Oh, I can't do that. Aim 20 yards left, hit it, bang, cuts to the left side in play. 
and I say, look, that's your shot pattern today. You're gonna have to play it. If we wanna fix that, we can go into the range and into the studio and fix that. Or we can try and fix it on the course, but you get such limited goes. Think about how many times you're in a driver on the course. Is it 12 times, 12, 13 times? Trying to fix things in 13 shots is hard. Play those patterns. Learning them to start is huge and learning how to adapt to them on the course is equally as big. Let me know if this video helps. Don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. If you want more free golf content, hit that thumbs up button down there if you liked the video. Also let me know if it did help in the comments and if it didn't. And if it didn't, love the fact it didn't, but let me know what you do want and I'll make more of it to help you as well. Come on, let's get that driver in play. Thanks for watching.